Welcome to this session on the open and enrichment session under the Innovation Club activity and also under the uh, special campaign three uh, for institutions to, be, uh, to follow for the year 2023. And we are really grateful uh, to have uh, Dr. Binod Parameshwaran, who is the principal scientist in the Microbial Processes and Technology Division of CSIR National Institute of Interdisciplinary Science and Technology, Trivandrum, India. He, sir, has obtained PhD in biotechnology from University of Kerala, Trivandrum, India, and later worked as postdoctoral fellow at Korea Institute of Energy Research, South Korea, before joining as scientist at CSIR National Institute for Interdisciplinary Science and Technology, Trivandrum, India. And sir has uh, research interest in sustainable bioprocesses, biomass of fuels and chemicals, biopolymers and enzyme technology. Sir has more than 230 research publications with H index 61. And Dr. Binod Parameshwaran has also published nine books and 110 book chapters and his name has been listed in the world's top 2% scientist for the whole career as per the study by Stanford University. Dr. Binod Parameshwaran is the recipient of Kerala State Young Scientist Award from Kerala State Council for Science, Technology and Environment. Dr. Binod Parameshwaran is also a recipient of Professor S. B. Sincholkar Memorial Award of the Biotech Research Society India, Fonde Research Excellence Award from IBA, and also have the Mary Curie Fellow to his credit. Dr. Binod Parameshwaran is a Fellow of International Society for Energy, Environment, and Sustainability. Dr. Binod Parameshwaran is an editorial board member of Bioresource Technology, Journal of Environmental Science and Engineering, Bioengineered and Frontiers. Uh, and Dr. Binod Parameshwaran is also a National Honorary Advisory Board member for Center for Energy and Environmental Sustainability, India and Central Office Executive of the Biotech Research Society India and India Office Executive of International Bioprocessing Association. And we are really grateful to Dr. A.K. Prema, uh, Coordinator 14000 LSE in Regional Center Campus to help the Regional Center to identify Dr. Vinod Parameshwaran as a resource person for this event which is being covered under two uh, uh, major events of the regional center. One is under the Innovation Club activity. The other one is under Special Campaign 3 uh, for the year 2023. Now, I call upon Dr. Prasita Unikrishnan to give a brief of what is the Innovation Club activity and before handing over the floor to Dr. Vinod Parameshwaran. We are really grateful, sir, to be uh, for uh, accepting our invitation and uh, being with us, and we extend our gratitude to you. And over to Dr. Prasita Unikrishna. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy, madam, uh, for the kind words and for the very good introduction which has been uh, rendered to Dr. Vinod Parmeshwar and sir. Sir, uh, this activity, as Dorothy, madam, already mentioned, is a part of the Innovation Club at Regional Center Cochin. And the Innovation Club at East Igno Regional Center Cochin was initiated under the encouragement of National Center for Innovation in Distance Education, that is the NCID, which is at Igno headquarters, Delhi. Uh, the National Center for Innovations in Distance Education was established in December 20, uh, 2005. Uh, it is a facility for promoting, supporting re-engineering and disseminating innovations in open and distance learning system 
and the NCID is a ground for nurturing bright and inquisitive mi uh, minds whose ideas and explorations are expected to develop the audio system to suit the needs of the generation next year. In fact, the center's goal is to develop a culture of continued search for new and innovative solutions uh, to offer seamless education for all to achieve cost efficiency in its operations and provide borderless access to quality education and training. Uh, in fact, under regional center coaching, a series of monthly lectures identified as open session uh, come enrichment session are being held at uh, regional center coaching since September 2018. Uh, the sessions are usually held uh, with an objective to enrich and generate awareness amongst the learners of IGNO on a wide range of topics ranging from time management, career management, e-support services of IGNO, entrepreneurial opportunities available, innovations in ICT interventions in education in India, entrepreneurial transformations of the conduct of education in India, life skills for a successful living, culture of body centrism and pace in life, relevance of Gandhi, bringing out the best in people, unleashing the power of effective communication and various other, other topics. In fact, this also acts as a platform to resolve the grievances with respect to the subject the student is pursuing. In fact, today's Innovation Club session, that is Biofuels for a Sustainable uh, Future, uh, is a very, very relevant topic as far as sustainable development is concerned. And uh, uh, we all know that this is a very burning topic uh, as far as the current scenario is concerned and uh, and very, very apt as far as the special campaign three and the Innovation Club session is concerned. So I'm sure the learners who are not only uh, present but who are also viewing this session uh, this is being transmitted facebook live through our facebook page of igno regional center coaching and so that the more and more students can view it from the facebook page of igno rc coaching the session is also being recorded and the recorded session would also be uploaded on the youtube page of uh, regional center coaching so i am really grateful to uh, prema madam and vinod sir for uh, being present here and uh, it's because of Prema Madam that she suggested your name that uh, we could uh, invite you for the session, sir. So I'm really grateful to her for that. Uh, and I'm also grateful to sir also because I know he's a very, very busy scientist. And in spite of his busy schedule, he has accepted uh, our uh, invitation to uh, attend the session and to address our learners. So really, on behalf of all at IGNO Regional Center Coaching, I'm grateful to you, sir. Uh, even my colleagues, uh, Dr. B.T. Jaja Kumari, Dr. S. Vijay Raghavan, and other staff at IGNO Regional Center Coaching have also joined and are viewing this session through the Facebook Live page as well. So, over to you, sir, uh, for the session, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dorothy, madam, for a uh, nice introduction. And I also thank Prasida, uh, madam, for inviting me and also Prama, Dr. A.K. Prema for suggesting my name for uh, this talk. So. So at the outset, I would like to thank the GNO uh, Regional Center for inviting me in this open come enrichment session under Innovation Club activities and a special campaign. So let me uh, share my presentation. So uh, today I am going to talk about uh, the biofuel for sustainable development. So I am uh, from CSIR National Institute for Interdisciplinary Science and Technology. As you know, the CSIR is one of the premier uh, research institution in India. It is uh, started in the year 1942, even before the independence of India. And today we have uh, almost 38 laboratories spread, spreading across all over India. And the major mandate of CSIR is to develop uh, the industrial research that uh, actually help the industries to find uh, or develop technologies and uh, uh, solving the problems of uh, industrial importance. So I belongs to the microbial process and technology division where we are basically looking for bio-based or microbial based processes for most of the industrial activities. So to, my today's talk is uh, biofuels. As, as all of you know, the biofuel, the current scenario biofuel is one of the major uh, uh, topic of interest or major topic of discussion. Because uh, as all of us knows that uh, uh, the, the current use of uh, petroleum reserves actually create a lot of problems to the environment. So as a as a uh, uh, alternative for this uh, uh, petroleum derived fuels, so there is a need for an alternative resources. And in this area, we are working on 
the developing the uh, the fuels from biological resources so uh, since the, the the audience is very um, uh, very wide uh, area of uh, uh, activities or uh, 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 from different disciplines i will just make a very simple or layman kind of a presentation so that uh, uh, all, most of you can able to understand without uh, much problem so first of all we need to see what is a biofuel so biofuel as uh, you, you may be knowing the biofuel is any fuel that is derived from biomass so uh, then then the com comes the questions what is biomass so biomass is a renewable organic material that comes from plants and animals so all the the living material that comes under this uh, biomass so even even it involves uh, the wood, wood or the plant substances or vegetable oil or animal fat or then uh, the any any kind of a uh, food waste or uh, the the trash that are of biological origin then sewage waste or animal manure crop so all this material the, the 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 living organism as well as the organic material that comes from this uh, living organism like plants and animals comes as biomass so this biomass having a huge lot of potential because it is actually a very uh, uh, high storage of carbon so as you know the carbon is one of the important uh, building block for all the all the molecules so this biomass contains high or rich source of carbon so this carbon we can use for making biofuel so any fuel that are derived from any of these biomass are known as uh, biofuel so as i mentioned earlier uh, we use the crude oil or the natural gas or petroleum reserves so for uh, for our, most of our almost 80 percentage of our energy needs currently depends upon the petroleum reserves but uh, the use of petroleum reserves have a lot of uh, environmental problems mainly it creates air pollution or acid rain or it, it makes oil spill or uh, the generation of waste oil or uh, during the drilling of uh, this kind of uh, petroleum reserves or crude reserves it uh, uh, discharges a lot of waste so th there are a lot of environmental uh, impact or environmental issues associated with uh, petroleum derived uh, fuels so and uh, this one of the major uh, uh, the effect of this petroleum the use of this petroleum derived fuel is the the climate change as you know the climate change refers to the the shift in the temperature and weather pattern of the earth as you can see now itself you can see the the, the temperature of earth is even uh, rising and even you can see the weather condition uh, earlier uh, we used to have a regular weather maybe during the monsoon season normally it starts in the month of uh, june and uh, uh, but now you can see sometimes the monsoon is very delayed or we may get a heavy rain during the uh, during the summer season and even you can see the last two to three days we have we are expecting we expected or we we uh, actually found very heavy rain mainly due to this uh, uh, this uh, the, 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 the condition which is uh, pre prevalent in the in the in the ocean so this change in the or shift in the in the weather pattern is mainly because of the the climate change and uh, since uh, uh, 1800 the human after 1800 the the major uh, uh, the the impact or major drivers for the climatic change is the human activities and primarily due to the burning of fossil fuels like coal oil and gas and this burning of fossil fuel generate a huge amount of greenhouse gas so greenhouse gases are the the gas which uh, uh, actually which is uh, uh, which like uh, the, the gases like carbon monoxide carbon dioxide or nitrous oxide those kind of gases are comes under the greenhouse uh, gas so the 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 uh, what is the impact of this greenhouse gas actually uh, the uh, you may be knowing the greenhouse effect the greenhouse effect is actually uh, the 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 effect or the condition which uh, maintain the uh, the uh, the heat in on the surface of earth so normally what happens is that when when solar radiation comes into the earth so this solar radiation emit back to the surface and due to the presence of carbon monoxide carbon dioxide and nitrous oxide these gases the emitted uh, the heat is coming back to the earth and then the, it maintains the uh, the the heat of the earth surface so that is why we are experiencing almost 35 to 40 40 degrees celsius mainly because of this greenhouse uh, effect 
suppose if these greenhouse gases are not there what happens is that earth will be very 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 cold so we don't have that much heat so the earth may, may not be able to fit for uh, human life or any 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 life form so because of this uh, uh, greenhouse effect because of, because greenhouse effect is happening due to the natural greenhouse effect as well as the human enhanced greenhouse effect the natural greenhouse effect is actually the naturally present carbon monoxide carbon dioxide all these gases actually help to prevent the the re-emission of heat from the earth surface so that is why it maintain the heat over the earth surface but due to the uh, enhanced human activities what happens is that the amount of carbon monoxide carbon di dioxide and nitric ox nitrous oxide all these gases in the earth surface or in the atmosphere will be very highly concentrated so the, in effect what happens whatever the uh, the the heat which is emitted from the earth completely almost 90 percentage of this heat coming back to the earth surface so altogether the temperature of the earth is earth increases drastically so that is why you can you know, I may be hearing that uh, many part of the the europe uh, this time experienced very high very high summer normally in the europe the the, the summer uh, summer time is uh, very pleasant like uh, 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 like 28 to 30 degrees celsius but this time it uh, exceeds 35 38 even 40 uh, sometimes so this is mainly because the high concentrated carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide which is present in the earth surface which actually uh, emit back all the solar radiation that is coming into the earth so so this actually can, uh, uh, increases the, the the temperature of the earth surface so in effect what happens you can see in the earth uh, you can see in the north pole and south pole south pole there is a uh, ice or glaciers so because of the enhanced uh, uh, heat these glaciers are melting very drastically and in effect what happens the the, the water in the sea increases so it affect actually the the the, the you know, erosion of soil or even the extrusion of this uh, uh, the the sea into the into the uh, surface or into the land so these are the major so there are uh, in natural human uh, greenhouse effect is actually helpful for our living organism because it maintains the normal temperature on the earth but due to the human activities like use of petrol and use of diesel and other um, um, uh, other uh, petroleum uh, reserves the, the 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 concentration of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide increases over the earth surface which in turn increases the temperature on the earth surface and as a result there is a melting of glaciers happens and it, it completely changes the the weather pattern or temperature on the earth surface and another issue is the the air pollution because uh, if you use the fossil fuels so it uh, generate lot of particulate materials so you can see that almost 99 percentage of uh, uh, india's 1.5 billion people are uh, breathing the, the polluted air as per the study by uh, who and the, the study also demonstrated that uh, how this air pollution uh, retards growth uh, by causing people to die prematurely so you can see the 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 the, the picture here you can see you can see the the particulate matter which has less than 10 is actually in a very very small areas in the, the in this year you can see in the northeastern region or in the small area in the northern region and some area in the uh, Uti or uh, that uh, uh, high highland region but all other places you can see the particulate matter level is very high you can see in the in the case of this uh, uh, Punjab and uh, Haryana and this Uttar Pradesh in this region you can see this red color because the particulate matter is more than 90 micrograms per meter cube so this is very very high and mainly because of the large number of uh, transportation activities and also the the uh, the farmers in the punjab region actually bu uh, actually burn the stubbles after the uh, harvest so this also create a lot of uh, this particulate matters on the on on the uh, uh, surface of earth and uh, you can see that india happens to be the world's third third largest energy consumer and uh, it is the fourth uh, 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 consumer for petroleum products after United uh, United States, China, and uh, Japan. And you can see the transport sector almost 51 percentage of uh, 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 transport sectors consume petroleum products, and 70 percentage of diesel and 90 per 99 percentage of uh, uh, petroleum are consumed by transport sector. And this demand is growing 
every, every year. So in this case, we can see. So I mentioned about the the the, the, the bad effects of this uh, the use of petroleum. Um, and uh, uh, the use of petrol and diesel or other uh, crude oil, which create a lot of particulate matters and also increases the, uh, the earth temperature and uh, uh, it increases the greenhouse gas emission or greenhouse effect and also the, the weather pattern and the temperature of the earth. So in this scenario, we need to see uh, the importance of renewable energy. So renewable energy or the alternative energy are the, the, the alternative sources rather than petroleum reserves. So there are a lot of uh, other sources uh, of energy uh, like solar energy, wind energy, hydro energy, bio energy. So all these type of alternative energy sources are called uh, renewable energy. Why it is called renewable energy? Because it can be renewed because solar energy, solar is actually, it, it, it will be there as far as uh, uh, the earth is there or the um, human life is there, the solar energy will be there. And also wind energy, it, it will not exhaust. Hydro energy, it, it will not exhaust because of the, the water cycle. And even bioenergy, as far as human cultivation or biomass uh, is there, the, we, can, we can generate bioenergy. So these kind of energy are called uh, renewable energy. But uh, in, in the case of petroleum reserves, this is not a renewable energy because the petrol reserves are very, very finite. Because once we, because the, 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 the petroleum reserve within the earth is actually finite and uh, uh, it is estimated that in the uh, coming uh, around 100 to 150 years, the complete reserves of petroleum will uh, diminish in the Earth's surface. So these kind of renewable energies are, are having major uh, benefit, like environmental benefit includes it emits fewer few carbon emission than fossil fuel, and uh, these are very renewable and is a sustainable. Why it is it called sustainable? Sustainable is actually which will be forever so these kind of uh, resources are called sustainable resources so alternative uh, resources or these kind of energy resources are sustainable resources and these are biodegradable because it is uh, emit less toxic uh, materials than fossil fuel so today i will be going to talk about uh, this bioenergy which uh, uh, bioenergy is the that are energy that are derived from biomass it, it is like a biofuel so it includes biodiesel, biomethanol, bioethanol, biobutanol, biofuel cell, and biohydrogen. So all these are coming under this bioenergy. So today I will be talking about the bioethanol, which is actually one of the major liquid transportation fuel that can be replaced the, the, uh, the petrol, which we are using today. So biofuel appears to be one of the realistic uh, solution to provide a renewable energy because it, it is an alternative fuel for the transportation sector and these uh, biofuels because of their uh, the liquid nature and compatibility with the uh, traditional fuel uh, uh, so this having wider uh, opportunities because uh, if you if in the case of bioethanol this ethanol can be mixed with the petrol so that is why it is called a compatible so ethanol can be mixed with the, the petrol so that it can be used as a fuel in in in, in the petrol vehicle and uh, uh, as a fuel product this biofuel offers a number of ad technical advantages like uh, it emits uh, 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 less sulfur or it is uh, actually a sulfur free and uh, aromatic free and a uh, good combustion properties the only one drawback is that the it has a lower heat content than petroleum derived fuel due to the uh, low uh, oxygen content so that means that uh, the, the the fuel efficiency like uh, the mileage what we are telling um, uh, will be very you know, it will be not very less it will be less compared to petrol so that is the only disadvantage but other than this this can be uh, very uh, compatible with the petrol and it can be used in all the all the vehicle and it emits a uh, very low uh, carbon emission as well as there is no sulfur and aromatic free it is more like a, a pure emission like a more environmental friendly fuel so here you can see how uh, this biofuel reduce the greenhouse gas emission because the bio major environmental benefit of biofuel is reduction in the greenhouse gas emission as i mentioned earlier the due to the use of exhaust exhaust use of this petroleum petrol and diesel the greenhouse gas emission is very high that is why the weather change and uh, the temperature rise in that uh, earth happens but because of the use of this biofuel we can reduce the greenhouse gas emission here you can see a, a comparative study of uh, the greenhouse gas emission 
uh, by various uh, energy, various fuels, like you can see in the gasoline or petrol, you can see this much amount of greenhouse gas emission is happening. But if you use the ethanol, ethanol can be derived from various sources, which I am going to uh, discuss in the coming slides. So we can make ethanol from corn. So if you may use or if you make bioethanol from corn, uh, there is a, a reduction from 19 to 52 percent reduction in the greenhouse gas emission. But if you use sugarcane for ethanol production, there is a 78 percentage reduction in greenhouse gas emission. And if you use a cellulosic ethanol or a biomass, it uh, reduces almost uh, 86 percentage of greenhouse gas emission. So this is the, 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 the study shows that uh, the use of bio fuel or bioethanol or biofuel reduces the green, greenhouse gas emission. So this slide also shows how much the, the different uh, greenhouse gases are emitted using uh, uh, different uh, uh, biofuel, especially the bioethanol. So there are different types of bioethanol. One is a lower level blend of bioethanol means E10. E10 means 10 percentage of ethanol is mixed with the petrol. E10 means ethanol, 10 percentage ethanol mixed with petrol. And here you can see E85. E85 is 85 percentage of methanol can mix with the petrol. So if you make a 10 percentage blend of petrol with ethanol, there is almost 25 to 30 percent decrease in carbon monoxide and 10 percent decrease in carbon dioxide. And uh, there is also a decrease in the nitrous oxide volatiles and other, other aldehydes. But uh, if, you, if you make a high uh, blends like uh, uh, E85, 85 percentage of ethanol mixed with the 15 percentage of uh, petrol, you can see almost a 100 percentage decrease in the carbon monoxide, uh, carbon dioxide, and 30, 25 to 30 percentage decrease in the carbon monoxide, and even 20 percent decrease in the carbon um, uh, nitrous oxide. So this shows that uh, the use of ethanol actually decreases the greenhouse gas emission. And if you see the, the generation of biofuel, we can divide the biofuel into four generation, first, second, and third, first, second, third, and fourth generation. The first generation biofuels are biofuels that are produced directly from the food crops. So if we use any of the food crops or any of the food material for biofuel production, it is called first generation biofuel. Like we can use corn or we can use sugar, we can use starch, we can use uh, sugarcane juice. So if we use all these food like material, it is called first generation. The second generation biofuels are biofuels that are produced from non-food crops. So any crops that are non-food like a wood material, organic waste, so food crop waste or any, any waste biomass. If you are using any waste resources that are not a food material, then and if you generate biofuel using these non-food material, it is called second generation biofuel. Then comes the third generation. Third generation biofuel is actually uh, the biofuel that are produced by uh, the, the engineered uh, energy crops such as algae. You can see, you can, you may be knowing algae. Algae is a, a, a kind of a microorganism that you can see in the pond and other water resources. You can see a small green colored uh, the microorganism that is called algae. So if we, we, algae can also be used for the production of uh, biofuel. If you are using algae, as a source for the generation of biofuel, we will call it as third generation. And fourth generation biofuels are genetically en engineered organism or genetically engineered plant. Actually, those kind of plants that emit less carbon, but it uh, during the growth of that uh, plant, it fix more carbon dioxide. So it, we will call it as a carbon negative crops. So these are the four uh, generation of biofuels. Then. I told about the first generation biofuel. So first generation biofuel normally use food material for the production of biofuel. So we can use uh, the pure vegetable oil, like uh, uh, any, any plant oil, like uh, rapeseed oil or oil palm, soya, canola, jetrafa, castor oil. If you use any of this oil uh, for uh, biofuel production, it is called a first generation. All these you can see the first generation. So bio, pure vegetable oil can be used. These kind of oils can be used for the production of biodiesel. And uh, uh, 
then in other to the uh, uh, other than this one this can be also used for the uh, the, the the production of uh, other kind of uh, um, uh, biodiesel which is actually the the uh, methyl esters of fatty acid then bioethanol also we can make like uh, sugar beet sugar cane these are all food material so these food materials can be used for the bioethanol then we can use biomass for the biogas production and we can use also bio ethyl uh, tertiary butyl ether that is also a kind of a, a biofuel these are the examples of first generation biofuel but what is the problem in using uh, this first generation biofuel in a country like uh, india because there are there uh, occurs a question um, uh, what uh, whether we whether we need food or fuel because many of the develop, developing countries or underdeveloped countries you can see poverty is still a major issue and even malnutrition so in such case we cannot use any food material for the fuel production so that is why major major concern is that we cannot use uh, country like india we cannot use any food material for uh, biofuel production so our option is the use of second generation biofuel so what are the second generation biofuel what are the examples of the second generation biofuel one is bioethanol so this is a the the, the we, we specifically called a cellulosic ethanol because we can make this bioethanol using the biomass lignocellulosic biomass lignocellulosic biomass is not nothing but uh, the plant waste like you know the the uh, the rice straw or wheat straw harvesting the rice whatever uh, we are getting like white coal we are telling now so those kind of material we can use for the production of bioethanol for white coal adu polulla sanangal okke end plant material waste aitla end plant material namak use edittu bioethanol undakka so ee plant material ana parayan lignocellulosic biomass so lignocellulosic biomass is any plant material which which are Uh, which are the uh, product of agricultural residue it is called as an agricultural residue after harvesting the food the remaining waste uh, plant is called as lignocellulosic biomass then we can also use uh, this lignocellulosic biomass for biogas production and this can also used for the biodiesel production and also like other biofuel like biomethanol biobutanol or other higher alcohols we can make and also we can use Uh, this material for the production of bio hydrogen so these are the examples of uh, second generation bio uh, second generation biofuels and this is a third generation biofuel i told the third generation bio biofuels are biofuels that are produced from microorganisms such as uh, algae or phytoplankton or bacteria you can see we can cultivate uh, algae in in the in a, in, a, in a condition like this a reactor like this the advantage is that during the algal cultivation it uh, use atmospheric carbon dioxide so if you ready if you if uh, the the cultivation during the cultivation of algae it absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere like plants while plant uh, that is why we are telling uh, we should uh, plant uh, as much uh, trees or plants as possible because in order to reduce the greenhouse gas emission because it absorbs carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide is one of the major cause of greenhouse gas emission or greenhouse effect high greenhouse effect so uh, during algal cultivation the carbon dioxide is fixed by the algae and this algae can be uh, used for the extraction of lipid and this can be used for the production of uh, biodiesel and then what is the scenario of biofuel in india so actually in uh, this uh, the the uh, the discussion about biofuel or the act, act uh, the action about biofuel in india actually started way back in uh, 2002 Uh, when the ministry of petroleum and uh, natural gas uh, of india come up with a notification for making 5 percentage blending of ethanol with petrol so initially uh, in in the year 2003 the government has recommended 5 percentage blending of ethanol with uh, petrol and uh, uh, but uh, what happens is that we cannot at that time we don't have enough ethanol in 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 the markets so we could not able to achieve this 5 percent blending that time and then government has come up with in 2007 government has come up with a, a mandatory 5 percent blending of petrol across a certain um, uh, 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 a certain uh, uh, region like uh, uh, the the especially the the sugar producing uh, sugar sugar producing state like uh, uh, this uttar pradesh 
and uh, Bihar, all those area, the government has made a uh, mandatory 5% it's blending. But uh, till July 2014, we could not able to achieve uh, the blending because we could able to achieve only 1.3% blending. <coughs> so then government has come up with uh, uh, the national policy on biofuel in the year 2018. So the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas published its the natural policy, national policy on biofuel. And uh, this policy was further amended in uh, uh, 2022 June. And the, the objectives of this policy is to reduce the import of petroleum products by fostering the, uh, the domestic biofuel production. So this policy actually recommends the 5% blending uh, by uh, 2022. Uh, and then uh, and 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 thus reduce the import of petroleum products and uh, by this policy we achieved the five percentage blending and now uh, the 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 mandate of the government is to reduce the carbon fruit uh, footprint by 30 to 35 percentage by the year 2030 and also the 20 percentage of ethanol blending by uh, 2026. So 20 percentage of blending of ethanol in petrol and five percentage of blending of uh, biodiesel in diesel by 2026 so this is the the, the, the target of india uh, for uh, 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 in the in the in the case of uh, biofuel so now whatever the, pet, the the petrol we are getting actually this petrol is blended with uh, ethanol 10 percentage of ethanol is blended uh, with this petrol currently what we are getting so because the petroleum company itself uh, blend ethanol with the, the uh, with the petrol and uh, we achieved the all uh, five percent we uh, ten percent we already achieved and now the target is to achieve 20 percentage of blending of ethanol by 2026 and uh, recently the, uh, in the the g20 summit which was uh, held in the last month on 9th september 2023 and the prime minister Sri narendra modi uh, uh, along with the leaders of Singapore, Bangladesh, Italy, USA, Brazil, Argentina, Mauritius, and UAE, launched a go global biofuel alliance uh, uh, along with the G G20 summit, which was held in the uh, held in New Delhi in the last month. So this global alliance actually um, uh, intend to expedite the global uptake of biofuel through facilitating technology advancement, intensifying utilization of sustainable biofuel, shaping robust standard setting and certification through participation of wide spectrum of uh, stake stakeholders and this alliance also act as a central repository of knowledge and a expert hub and this alliance also serves as a catalytic platform fostering global collaboration for the advancement and wide adoption of biofuel so this alliance is a very very good alliance as india has initiated in order to make a, the india a self-reliant in energy especially in the in the case of bio biofuel <coughs> now i will just get, tell about some of the technology how we can produce ethanol and what is the the uh, the, the major uh, the techniques are involved in the bioethanol production so if you can see the, the production of ethanol today you can see the uh, the brazil is one of the best example they implemented the use of uh, bioethanol uh, in, in almost uh, uh, 10 to 15 years before because the, uh, you know, Brazil is one of the, the major producer of sugar. So they have a surplus amount of sugar. So they use the sugarcane juice directly uh, because sugarcane juice, juice is rich of sugars. So these sugars, they ferment and they, they make ethanol. So in Brazil, now you can see uh, there are uh, um, in the in the if you go to the petrol pump, you can see uh, petrol, diesel and uh, the, the ethanol blended petrol. And even you can you can if you want you can use 100 percent ethanol in your vehicle so that is the the status of uh, uh, the, the ethanol production in brazil and similarly in the us uh, they have a rich source of uh, starch especially the corn so they use uh, corn because so corn is a rich source of starch so the starch can be hydrolyzed to make sugars and these sugars on fermentation we can get uh, ethanol so I will come to what is fermentation and all in the in the coming slide. So this is how the USA uh, produce uh, um, uh, ethanol currently. And uh, in the production of bioethanol, I told we are using second generation bioethanol. We use lignocellulosic biomass. So, so lignocellulosic biomass include any crop residue 
which include uh, the, the sugarcane bagasse or uh, corn stover, wheat straw, rice hull, any, any, any so, uh, straw or bagasse, any, any biomass or any waste uh, plant uh, resources. And we can use wood also. We can use hardwood, softwood, or we can use the paper, maybe newsprint or waste paper, or we can use any herbaceous plants like uh, plants like uh, this rich grass or any kind of uh, herbaceous plants, or even you can use the, the municipal solid waste for the production of uh, bioethanol. So all these lignocellulosic biomass mainly contains all these components. Main content, main content of this lignocellulosic biomass is cellulose. Cellulose is actually a, a polymer of glucose. So, so many glucose molecules join together to form cellulose. And hemicellulose is also uh, contains glucose, mannose, galactose, this kind of sugar molecule. All these sugar molecules join together to form a hemicellulose. And uh, the lignin, lignin is actually a, a aromatic a aromatic compound that is also present in the in the lignocellulosic biomass. In addition to that, small amount of protein and extract is present in the lignocellulosic biomass. So in this lignocellulosic biomass, the cellulose and hemicellulose are major component we can use for the bioethanol production because this cellulose and hemicellulose these are uh, made up of glucose or the glucose molecule like uh, mannose, galactose and ramnose. So actually we need glucose for ethanol production. So for the production, uh, uh, so glucose is present in the plant biomass in the form of cellulose and hemicellulose. So we can use any plant biomass because all, all, all plant biomass is made up of cellulose and hemicellulose. If you go deep into the, the structure of this lignocellulosic biomass, if you go to the deep into the plant uh, structure, like a minute structure or plant cell wall, you can see the plant cell. If you go to the plant, uh, it is made up of different cell. If you go further deeper, you can see macrofibrils. And even you can see the microfibrils. So we, within this microfibril, you can see these are the, the cellulose chain. This is a, a, a polymer or a chain of glucose molecule, several more glucose molecule joined together to form a cellulose. Or similarly, it is it contains hemicellulose, which is contains different other sugar molecule that is a. So if you break each of these component, each of these component in the in the cellulose, because I told cellulose is made up of glucose. So if you break the cellulose molecule, we will get sugar. So, and this sugar is we needed for ethanol production. So this is the basic uh, principle or basic uh, hypothesis in the in the production of bioethanol but uh, how we can do that so i told uh, the, uh, the the plant biomass or biomass feedstock uh, or any plant biomass made up of cellulose hemicellulose lignin protein and extractive and for bioethanol production we need cellulose and hemicellulose but we need to remove lignin and other uh, protein and extractive so in order to remove the lignin and other extractive, we need to do a, a, a mild uh, treatment that is we called pretreatment. If you, if you do a pretreatment of the lignocellulosic or any plant biomass, what happens that we can remove the lignin from the biomass. So if we remove the lignin and other extractive from the biomass, what is remaining is cellulose and hemicellulose. So this cellulose and hemicellulose so after a pretreatment, the lignin is removed. Then what remaining here is the cellulose and the hemicellulose. And this cellulose and the hemicellulose, we can uh, uh, undergo hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is actually breaking down of cellulose. So I told cellulose is made up of glucose. If we break down the cellulose molecule, what we get is uh, glucose. So this process is called hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is break, breaking down. So how, how we do hydrolysis? Hydrolysis we can do using different enzymes like cellulases or hemicellulases. These enzymes break down the cellulose molecule into glucose. So once the, the, the enzyme break down the cellulose molecule, we will get sugar or we call it as fermentable sugars. So these sugars, we can undergo fermentation. Fermentation is nothing but a, the microbial action. You know, when, when we uh, uh, making curd, curd, curd making is a fermentation process. Or when the, when we make a dosha and idli, the batter, we just keep it for making it a, a fermented. 
so the, the so just for a overnight we just keep it for some time then the the, the batter will just ferment and become a kind of a very tasty uh, dosa and idli so this action is microbial so because of this kind of microbial action is called a fermentation what happens is that during uh, the dosa making or the batter when we make this a batter the microorganisms like lactobacillus they grow on this uh, this batter and it produces or it grows there and it produces some uh, metabolites or chemicals like uh, some acids like lactic acid or uh, other acetic acid or other acids so that is why we are getting that sour taste in the in the curd or in the case of uh, the batter uh, this dosa idli batter so this kind of microbial action is called fermentation so similarly here when we add sugar along with the yeast you know yeast when we add sugar with the yeast this sugar molecule is converted into ethanol by yeast so that is how we are getting ethanol so this ethanol we are using as a bioethanol for microbial action so in the con in the conversion of uh, any plant biomass into ethanol there involves uh, three steps one first step is pretreatment in, the, in that pretreatment the unwanted material like lignin is removed from the biomass the second step is hydrolysis during hydrolysis the the cellulose and hemicellulose molecule breaks down into glucose molecule and in the fermentation the glucose molecule is converted into ethanol by microbial action so these three process pretreatment hydrolysis and fermentation these three processes are involved in the production of bioethanol and so uh, we also need to see how much uh, biomass or planned waste is gen available in india so india generate almost more than 600 million metric tons of agriculture residue annually and uh, if you see the 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 plant material available uh, you can see the sugarcane tops after cultivating the sugarcane a lot of plant waste is generated almost 79 million metric tons of um, sugarcane tops are uh, wasted or generated in india annually similarly almost 8.9 million metric tons of rice straw uh, 8 million metric tons of rice straw and 9 million metric tons of wheat wheat straw and 11 million metric tons of cotton when they pluck the cotton then their plant is a waste so all these plant biomass we can use for the production of bioethanol and if we use all plant material so theoretically we can produce almost 30 billion liters of ethanol annually uh, 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 in india so this is the, this is the statistics of the 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 plant material which are available in india and the potential of these plant material for the uh, production of bioethanol then so we need to understand the the composition i told the composition of plant cellulose hemicellulose and lignin so we need to estimate uh, how much cellulose hemicellulose or lignin present in the plant biomass there are a uh, lot of techniques available uh, so that we can estimate the 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 cellulose hemicellulose and lignin in the in the plant material then so i told the first step in the conversion is the 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 pretreatment so what happens in the pretreatment you here you can see in the picture here this, this is the plant biomass which is very high and compact you know the plant is very very thick and compact kind of a material so it it is actually made up of you can see here a, a, a the made up of cellulose hemicellulose and very thick lignin wall here is very thick lignin wall and uh, along with that cellulose and hemicellulose are very compactly packed so during pretreatment what happens is that this compact packed plant material become loosened so that the cellulose and hemicellulose are exposed and the lignin is removed and after pretreatment so we can do the pretreatment using different technique like uh, we can use mild acid or alkali for pretreatment physical method for pretreatment there are different pretreatment methods are available so if you use acid pretreatment what happens is that you can see your lignocellulose biomass when you treat with mild acid what happens is that the the hemicellulose is removed and cellulose and lignin will be remains there which on hydrolysis we will get sugar and if you use alkaline pretreatment the lignin is completely almost completely removed from the biomass and we will get hemicellulose and cellulose in the plant biomass which on hydrolysis we will get a sugar and this sugar on fermentation we get ethanol 
and here you can see the sum of the pictures how we can in the laboratory we can see how uh, this pretreatment is effective this is uh, the picture of uh, scanning electron microscopy of uh, the pretreated and uh, unpretreated biomass we can see unpretreated biomass is very thick and compact when when we do the pretreatment you can see the biomass is become loosened so why mainly because the lignin is removed and we, the cellulose and hemicellulose are exposed in the in the biomass then we can also analyze the the other um, the, the structure of this uh, um, uh, biomass by uh, uh, XRD and uh, FTF uh, different techniques are there so that we can find out the the chemical composition of the biomass and and then based on that we can select the, the effective pretreatment method and once pretreatment I, I told that the next step is hydrolysis you can see after pretreatment we will get the cellulose it's a very uh, long polymer of glucose so this enzyme, I told the hydrolysis is uh, uh, done using enzyme. So cellulase and hemicellulose enzyme. So this enzyme act on this cellulose polymer and it breaks the cellulose into glucose molecule. So we can make, we can produce the enzyme using various fungus. You know, fungus is a microorganism. So using various fungus, we can produce this enzyme. And then once we uh, develop uh, this process in the in the laboratory scale in a small scale then we need to commercialize because the major uh, uh, the, the the major aim of this work is this has to be commercially developed this has to be ethanol has to be produced in a large scale in an industrial scale so for that once we have all these uh, activities small uh, all these activities in a laboratory in a small scale then we will go for a uh, uh, the lab to plant uh, activities like in a small scale initially we start with a 10 gram or 20 gram then we start this scale up this process with the one kilogram 10 kilogram like that then we further develop into 50 kilogram or 100 kilogram and then finally in the commercial industries it may be up to one ton or 10 ton or 100 tons capacity so for that we need a step-by-step -step increase in the in the scale of activities and each uh, scale of activities we will analyze the the the, the various uh, the the effectiveness of pretreatment and hydrolysis and the amount of sugar we can generate here you can see using one kilogram of uh, uh, the, uh, the cotton this is a cotton residue one kilogram of cotton plant waste we can generate almost 0.4 kilogram of sugar so this is the the bioethanol pilot plant which is available in our institute in CSAR NIST. So we have a, a 50 to 80 kilogram of a, a pilot plant. So here you can see this is the, the pretreatment unit the, where we will do the pretreatment. After pretreatment, this is filtered and go to the hydrolysis unit and where it goes on hydrolysis and finally go to the fermentation unit where it produces ethanol. So this is the layout of the, the entire plant for the a biofuel or bioethanol production. We can see some of the pictures of this plant. This is the pretreatment unit. The biomass is uh, loaded in this pretreatment unit. After pretreatment, we will neutralize. So this is the the kind of biomass after pretreatment. And then after pretreatment, this is the we will go for hydrolysis. So here you can see initially uh, the biomass is very thick. Here this it contains this reactor contains biomass along with the enzyme after two hours it is very thick uh, slurry but uh, when after 24 hours you can see all the biomass is hydrolyzed and it become a sugar sugar syrup kind of a sugar solution so the biomass cellulose present in this biomass is uh, hydrolyzed into sugar solution so once this sugar is generated it is uh, uh, goes into this fermenter where it undergoes uh, fermentation after fermentation we will get uh, ethanol so we will go for yeast fermentation we will add yeast to this to this sugar solution then it undergoes fermentation and then after fermentation we will get ethanol then once we get the ethanol we can distill the ethanol and separate the ethanol from this reactor so this this is just a, a small video on the entire process during the process of fermentation the feedstock is delivered to the feed handling area for storage and size reduction in the very first step. 
since the efficiency of the fermentation is dependent on the particle size of feedstock, then the feedstock is sent to a pretreatment reactor. Here it happens, pretreatment. There are many ways to pretreat the feedstock by using steam, hot water, acid, and alkaline. In this video, we present the combination of steam and acid pretreatment. The pretreatment uh, exposed to cellulose, lignin is removed. Lignocellulose is hydrolyzed into cellulose, lignin, and hemicellulose in the presence of steam and acid. Then the pretreated feedstock is delivered into a hydrolysis reactor. So this is hydrolysis reactor. The material must be made less acidic for enzymes and organisms to function optimally. So these are enzymes which act on this cellular First, polymer the long cell chain and is break into glucose. By into short cell chain. Then the short cell chain is decomposed by exogluconase into cell bios fragments. Finally, the cell bios fragments is decomposed by beta glucosidase. This is the entire process of hydrolyzing cellulose into glucose. Together with microorganisms, nutrients, and antiphons, the glucose is delivered into fermentation reactor. 5-carbon and 6-carbon sugar can be fermented separately. So after hydrolysis, this is fermentation. Glucose is converted into ethanol. This is a glucose molecule. So one glucose is converted into two mole of ethanol. In the presence of yeast. <coughs> In addition to water and ethanol, the fermented brood contains a number of other materials, such as microbial biomass, fusel oil, volatile components. So after hydrolysis, uh, after hydrolysis and uh, fermentation, we will get ethanol, and this ethanol we can distill it, distillation, and separate the ethanol. We can store it, and it is transported to the the oil companies, and these oil companies. Uh, mix this ethanol with the petrol and distribute it for uh, use. So there are a lot of uh, works are going on uh, on this area, and a lot of research are also need to be done on this area because uh, we need to have an efficient pretreatment, hydrolysis, and fermentation. And the hydrolysis happens uh, using different enzymes, so we need to have a lot of R and D or research on the enzyme development and enzyme production and enzyme development, and also after fermentation. We need to have a lot of uh, uh, studies on the uh, the the uh, the, uh, the production of this ethanol and chemicals in the in the fermentation process. So the biofuel, if you see the biofuel uh, value chain, so you can see we have a lot of biomass resources like oil bearing plants are there, agriculture residues are there, good biomass is there. So this biomass need to be harvested, collected, handled, and storage, and then this has to be transported to the, the company where ethanol is producing. So we can go for various conversion technique I mentioned, pretreatment, hydrolysis, and uh, fermentation. And after fermentation, we will get the end product like uh, ethanol. Or in, in during the production, we will get other, because um, um, the fermentation gen generate other chemicals also. So that also we can use, uh, have a high, high value. Uh, uh, ke chemicals can also be produced in, uh, by this method. So the entire process is called a biomass-based biorefinery. So we are telling about petroleum refinery. So petro, what is petroleum refinery? Petroleum refinery is uh, actually when when the, the when we uh, dig out the crude oil. When crude oil on on uh, on fractional distillation, we will get a different component like uh, kerosene or uh, diesel, then uh, petrol. And other uh, components are we have natural gas. All these are getting from the crude oil. So one crude oil, we are getting many, many components. So like that, but like petroleum reserves, we can make biomass-based biorefinery. Using a biomass, we can make a different kind of product. Rather than bioethanol, we can make different products. Like you can see here, we can make amino acids, succinic acid or other chemicals, polyhydroxyalkanate, biopolymer, then ethanol can be produced, organic acids can be produced, and lignin. The lignin, what uh, I told you, the biomass contains lignin. So this lignin can be used for the production of uh, pyrolysis oil and bulk chemicals. So from a single biomass, we can make n number of products. So this kind of concept is called a biorefinery.
so uh, in, in so in the process actually there are a lot of challenges are had uh, because we need to have a lot of uh, uh, scientific fundamentals we need to be understand engineering fundamentals fundamentals also need to be uh, uh, we need to uh, improve or we need to understand and then we've commercialized the, uh, the 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 process so currently the india is uh, uh, the, in the in the verge of commercializing this bioethanol production techniques many of the oil companies are already have a setup for the uh, the production of uh, this bioethanol so the conclusion is that biofuel will ensure energy security to the country and uh, the biofuel production will generate uh, employment opportunities for ru rural biomass and uh, it also make the uh, the greening of a uh, wasteland by plantation of these kind of crops and biofuel will promote uh, integrated holistic uh, rural uh, development so there are uh, in the coming coming years the india will experience lot of uh, uh, activities or lot of uh, uh, technological improvement in the in the bio biofuel sector and that makes it more a uh, uh, sustainable uh, fuel economy as well as makes the uh, the target of uh, reduction of greenhouse gas emission and carbon dioxide as uh, as uh, india is targeted in in the coming years so with this i will stop uh, my presentation and one, once again thank you uh, the, the igno for uh, giving uh, igno regional center question for giving me this opportunity thank you all if you have any, any questions you can raise hello hello ah let me know yes okay well now another an excellent presentation where you have made it very very simple of course the, the pre treatment hydrolysis fermentation all these te technical terms are known to the people who are in the field but a uh, common person these may be somewhat different and you have given excellent examples also like arimavu pulikunnadum thayir undakunnadum okke vechitte adu endaanu nalladum namma hydrolysis nu parayumba nammal oru velliya muttumala ore muttayittu cut cheyyunnene pagaramana patra nalla oru illustration okke vechu cheyidene നന്നായിട്ടുണ്ട് <laughs> and that which is the latest thing i think which you shared about the global biofuel alliance so that was something very nice which you could share and sir uh, so many new new things we could get to know from your session like the national policy on biofuels which you shared with us which probably was something uh, which i got to know and about the production of biofuels and the futuristic perspective also you shared and the entire process as to how biofuels are generated that also you shared so it was a very interesting and very uh, innovative very nice presentation sir so thank you sir and i think our viewers could also have got a very basic idea about this uh, jalga ma'am if you want to share something please ma thank you very much sir for this beautiful presentation and it was very uh, informative especially i have to thank prema madam for giving such a very big scientist and his uh, approach is uh, ground level and uh, happy to have that uh, 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 happy to share that such a big person is uh, uh, there very near to us among us and uh, and sir you were highly informative for the biotechnology aspects we heard a lot but i think for me uh, this biofuel production processes uh, uh, it is totally totally a new area for me because uh, we are from social science um, uh, dis uh, area disciplines we don't know we just hearing about biotechnology but what is the in depth areas of biomass production and this um, uh, what is that a blending of biofuels with uh, it's a very big sustainable development aspect you have shared with us and in a, in such a very uh, simple manner even uh, a higher secondary level person can understand that way you are seeing that is the beauty of the um, ability of a teacher that also i appreciate 
and uh, sir uh, one of the uh, can i ask you one yes, question sure, sure. Yeah, breathing, i think uh, you also telling uh, you were also telling that uh, we need high uh, technological backgrounds for this one and so in a country like india cannot afford i think this is very is it cost effective sir when we are uh, utilizing this waste means why coal like that chappu chavar ok krishi ki upayogikunnundallo if we are converting all this into biofuels is it cost effective for lemon or uh, yes actually actually currently the major problem is the uh, the, the cost of bioethanol Uh, uh, when we are producing from lignocellulosic fiber, this planned waste. And normally, in, uh, if we use uh, sugar cane directly, the the production cost is very cheap. So, like uh, the government has already fixed uh, one rate for bioethanol. It is currently in the say around sixty-seven uh, rupees per liter. Oh. So, so government has already fixed a rate for bioethanol. We need to produce or we need to sell the ethanol at a rate of sixty-seven rupees per liter. That is the government uh, uh, fixed rate. but if we use uh, sugar cane juice then we can make it with that price because there is no issue at all but when we use this uh, uh, planned waste this may not be able to possible that is uh, actually not the problem with india all over the globe this is the problem so initially uh, this uh, us and uh, uh, us and other european countries they have started lot of big big bio ethanol plants but most of the plants now closed because of this this because of this cost uh, affordability So also one issue here, sir, right? Yeah. In the large scale, in the uh, agriculture, yes, that is also because especially Kerala like uh, states, they are going back from agriculture. Yes. So that is that will be a big. Yes. Yeah, so the challenge. so what now? Now government is planning is rather than going for a very big kind of a plant, hmm. make a small small decentralized approach because if a three acre four acre land is there, just to make a small bioethanol plant there, then hmm. another area. another plant small small plant if you pull together then uh, because the major problem in india as a country like india suppose ma- most of this uh, agriculture activities especially happens in the in the punjab uh, and uh, uttar pradesh area lot of agriculture activities land is available and a lot of agriculture activities is happening and they actually burn the soil every year mm. so if you suppose if the bioethanol plant is in the southern region and uh, the biomass is available in the ro- ro- northern region the tra- transportation itself is a very huge cost so we cannot do that so in a 100 km area if you make a plant and whatever biomass available in that area if you if you make a bio that would be more economical and now currently lot of improvement has happened uh, we could able to reduce the cost of bioethanol nearly to 100 rupees but in the coming year it may still reduce so maybe if, uh, it, this is achievable not uh, not uh, uh, very far but it is very easily achievable sir uh, suddenly one thought came into my mind i am a person who use electric vehicle uh, and uh, my rooftop uh, solar panel is also there uh, in my home because we are trying to make like that because we have a mooc yes. sustainable development one certificate course in environmental we have because the academics of igno many, many it's a joint venture yes. we are doing like that suddenly one thought came to me if we have five acres of land in a remote area somewhere can we uh, any project is there with the csir to uh, make a biofuel plant there or utilizing that land in such a way to agriculture like that is there any possibility sir yes 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 there is there are a lot of uh, possibilities because uh, csir is actually csir mandate is to transfer technologies to the industry to stakeholders so if you have any any land or any this kind of uh, 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 Um, uh, infrastructure available csr can provide the all the technical know how or technical support for developing the the plan that is the mandate and we are working on that one so definitely i think i will have communication with you and i sure. have such a plan because uh, in idiki district we have some land oh, okay. now we are residing here in ernakulam only so in future we, we won't be able to go there and do any uh, that type of things i think uh, without telling that Uh, a land we can do some useful things yes. for the sustainable sure, sure. development definitely, yeah. definitely we can do that only thing is that the the, the capex will be slightly mm-hmm. higher uh, because this is a, this kind of a plant i told you that the three unit operations are there pre treatment uh-huh. hydrolysis and fermentation yes. so the, the the capex will be slightly higher but uh, if for a bigger big uh, companies like uh, 
uh, IOCL or HPC or Reliance, those kind of, they can have that much invest and they can go for yeah. that. Yeah. But, a, but, a, but a startup kind of thing, this may not be affordable unless and until yeah, there is what I asked about venture capital or any other um, funding resources are available, this would be, but a, it is possible because of the availability of venture capital and other things. There are a lot of possibilities. So uh, CSR is always uh, to help uh, those kind of uh, industries or startups. Good, sir. Good, sir. Because uh, with, with your class, uh, such a thought has come and it is uh, totally innovative. I think I didn't uh, even know about uh, this type of things. Thank you very much for Thank you. Thank you. having such a occasion. Sir, I, I wanted to ask you one question, sir. Yeah. Uh, you told that 10% uh, of blending of ethanol has been achieved. Yes. And so uh, presently, the petrol, just from a layman perspective, I'm not. Hmm. But, uh, if, uh, the petrol which we get now, is it blended with 10% of ethanol? Yes, yes, yes. It, is, it is blended with 10% ethanol. So, how much does the government plan to achieve in the future, sir? It will be 100%? No, or... actually, uh, 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 to up to 20, actually, earlier government has planned 2030, 20% 20 of blend, blending. That was the plan. But then now they have, now we have advanced to very high. So, now government has changed into, by 2026, we had to achieve 20% blending. And up to 20% blending, we can use in our current engine, current petrol engine, whatever engine we are using in the in the two-wheeler or four-wheeler. In the current engine, up to 20% blending, there is no issue. But above 20% blending, then the engine has to be changed. So that is why now whatever the new uh, the four-wheelers and cars are coming, they have a flexi-fuel engine. So flexi-fuel engine means that they can have petrol or bioethanol or mixed petrol and bioethanol up to 100 percentage ethanol can be used in this flexi fuel engine so we hear about the hybrid models no? yes, yes. That, no, sir? yes 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 this is a this is a hybrid this, these engines are hybrid hybrid engines are uh, actually supposed to use in flexi fuel actually can be used in different types of fuel so then we have to change the technology of the <laughs> engine yes engine technology has to be already there already engine technology is already there already there so the, that is why now all the every B, bs4 came then bs6 came now all the cars which are getting it will be the this kind of flexi fuel engine and uh, yeah thank you so yes. we are also grateful sir once again for uh, yeah. on behalf of regional set of coaches I express my gratitude to Dr. Vinod Parmeshwaran for being the resource person uh, for this session, both under Innovation Club activity and also under special campaign, highlighting about biofuels. We are really grateful, sir, for your gesture of being with us and also sharing uh, uh, what you know as a scientist in layman language. Uh, for example, uh, I just remember my school days when you are talking about Hydrolysis is simply breaking down. I could recall my student uh, days, that is school days, and I recall my science teacher also in fourth standard sharing the same thing. And I, am, uh, I really appreciate it. And this is also in line with the NEP 2020. They say that the, the lab should come to the layman, and the layman uh, should know the language of a scientist, and the scientists should also know uh, how to interact with the public in layman language. So this uh, event, even though we didn't plan under NEP 2020, by the way of presentation of uh, uh, of Dr. Vinod Parameshwaran, who is a scientist, who could relate to each one who is available as an audience, future audience, because this video will be uploaded in layman language, for the topic biofuels, it will go on a long way for educating the public at large. Uh, in uh, Because it is in English, it will do for good for all those who know, know English. So it will go beyond the frontiers of the state of Kerala also. So we are, once again, we are grateful and we express our gratitude to Dr. Vinod Parameshwar for being our resource person. And friends, this innovation club activity or uh, also we talk about the Swayam portal, S-W-A-Y-A-M, Swayam portal. This has many of the courses uh, which the IGNU program, IGNU program has offered as separate subjects so that you can enroll. And what is the advantage of 
enrolling under SWAM is that without payment of a fee, a student can know the uh, or get the accustomed to the course structure and if willing to uh, write the exam or confident after getting the course content can pay the fee and write the examination. So please be benefited of enrolling under the MOOC course of SWAM and uh, IGNO's courses are also listed in the SWAM portal and IGNO admission is also open uh, for uh, uh, for this session July 2023 and we welcome you to join uh, IGNO courses also and always we take this session uh, from innovation club activity we have talked about special campaign 3 also and we also spoke about the SWAM of continuing education aspect for anyone even people say that when you read our brain cells are active so if you have any friends who uh, uh, are interested in continuing education please introduce swayam portal and as a life skill education we take this session also to two aspects life is not always a smooth journey but always friends when you encounter a hurdle it is meant to be crossed so the uh, once the uh, hurdle is crossed, it will become our milestone also for some other hurdle to cross, and it will motivate us to uh, help us uh, the, or give us the courage to cross another hurdle. And I want to end this program with a small thought, always, uh, uh, which is uh, which is a carry home message uh, for all of us, and it will help us to move ahead in our life skill education also. Uh, donkey was abandoned uh, because the master felt that it is very old and the master was trying to put mud over it after putting the donkey in the pit. But every time the donkey uh, uh, thought uh, that uh, uh, the mud is when the mud was fallen on it, it just shook it up and he thought, oh, I have enjoyed a good master so far. Maybe because of his old age, he, he has, uh, by mistake, he has put me in, in the pit. So now he is trying to make me come out. So every time some mud was put, it was just uh, trying to climb up. And what point it could see the master eye to eye. And she, it appreciated the master telling, uh, see, I know because of your old age, uh, by mistake, you have put me in. And I appreciate you could not put on full lorry to put me out or some rope to pull me out. But this small mud, I climbed it. I could understand. And uh, don't worry, we will take some rest and move ahead. Similarly, friends, even in our life, some hurdle may be caused by somebody. But when we take it in a, as an optimistic person, we that person will become one of our developers in life. So take this message, uh, your hurdles are meant to be crossed and it will give you uh, enough encouragement and motivation and courage when uh, to pass another hurdle when you encounter. Be optimistic and do one day at a time, uh, take one day at a time, do one activity in a day and also uh, 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 do not worry about tomorrow. That's what I will say. And friends, Doing one activity in a time does not mean accumulating all one-day activities and doing it in a time. It's procrastination. Okay. So, uh, we are also grateful to uh, our academics, Dr. V.T. Jalja Kumari, Dr. Vijay Raghavan, and the resource persons uh, uh, who was mobilized by Dr. A.K. Prema, coordinator 14000. And the back office end for the Facebook live session, the coordination of among the uh, various uh, uh, terminals was done by uh, Sri Mohammad Ansar and Madam Reshma Suresh. And we are grateful to them for their back office operation also. And we are for administrative help uh, from uh, the, uh, Sri K.J. Joseph and Sri K. Murali Dharan, who is also acknowledged in this endeavor and we look forward for the more sessions of this type and friends take home messages biofuels and also the life skill education of taking one day at a time without worrying about tomorrow
thank you for being with us. Okay, thank you. Sir, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.